I assumed that a lot of people were going to talk about how, oh, Ed's fat and you got this hot wife, and <laughs> I don't think that's really anything to be, uh, that's like an, an insult. I just want to, <laughs> one for the fat guys. Um, yeah, Ed and I chat a lot in fetish rooms, um, and uh, he made the mistake of telling me like some of the things he wanted to say about me. Uh, but I, I told him uh, a friend of ours, uh, a friend of mine, Kipper, who is really the greatest trivia host of all time. No offense to Jesse Egan, um, and a f and a friend of mine said, "Oh, it's nice to see Adam Gimbel here, uh, not promoting something," which I thought was so unfair because I think I get unfairly uh, singled out. Because I mean, when you're a working musician. You kind of, and, and Ed, you know, they made the joke about you emailing all your friends all the time about, oh, you know, I'm, my column's out or my new blog or whatever. And it, you just, you have to be able to, to separate the art from the marketing end and just know that um, if you don't constantly mention yourself and, you know, what you're up to, then people forget about you. And... Um, and I just really wanted to thank uh, Kevin Hellman from City Beat for letting us use this podium. And uh, I don't know that scotch tape comes off that easily, but that's not really what I'm trying to say here. Um, he, he told me about uh, one of the, I think it's the only other time you were at a roast. He's so, he's so thin sometimes. If he turns sideways, you don't even see him. Okay, I didn't want to talk about him anyway. Did he go pee? <laughs> Hold on, I'm texting you. Is that today? Which is what I texted him on my way walking up. Uh, Ed performed. Uh, it might be. You, is this the only other time you performed at a roast? Uh, yeah. Um, was um, what? I got hungry. All this talk about food. I'm like, oh no, I'm paper. Remember when Boyer from Daily Daily Shandley and, and Chainsaw was writing out all of his stuff at, you, at, at the VA house thing? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like what you're doing. It's like, oh, mm, I'm going to need this to be funny later. Um, <laughs> but uh, Ed, Ed uh, roasted uh, some friends of ours, Alicia and Danielle, who are right here up front, um, the queen and queen of the San Diego community. And... Uh, they do, a, they do a really cool festival called Indie Fest, where the worst singer and songwriters in the country get up and whine about how um, we're not going to sign to major labels as if they had a choice. And, and they do it on a stage that's sponsored by Budweiser. And they, they keep asking me to play it, but I won't. Luckily, my grandfather's band, Geezer, who, yeah, they're playing tonight um, at Club 11. But you should really come to karaoke here, not come see uh, the greatest Beastie Boys white guy tribute ever and raise money for cancer. But no, they should come see you. Um, anyway, uh, but they're playing Indie Fest, and they're going to be playing on the Nike stage. The Nike stage, 3 o'clock, be there. Um, but anyway, Ed was telling me how it was the worst public performance of his life and how all the rules of knowing your crowd went out the window as he described Danielle's, I think he used the word twat, is that right? In front of all your friends? That's Ed Decker, let's hear it for him. In, in front of a crowd of mostly lesbians, this male got up and started talking about female genitalia and got such a great response. And by great, I mean, let's talk about his writing. Um, he really knows how to take a really small, 
unfunny idea and draw it out into a thousand words every single week, week in, week out. I'm, I'm a little mad at you because uh, you also stole my quote, which shows how dedicated we are to reading his work that we only went as far back as this week's column. Um, but uh, I think that the Asperger should be taken in context, um, which is the, he said, isn't Ted Nugent just the most despicable Asperger in the world? I'm honestly amazed by the amount of, in italics, Dave Rowland, caca that spews out of his big fat maw. And by maw, I mean M-A-W, not you, Sue Ella. Let's hear it again for, um, for Ed Decker's mother, who was nice enough to come out. I mean, I can't believe you're even walking after last night. You were amazing. <laughs> Did I say that or think it? Okay. Um, I've mostly gotten know, to know Ed. Um, he is a judge at a uh, at a amazing event uh, out at a casino that no one wants to drive to. <laughs> called the Ulti It's UMC is what is what the all the people call it because acronyms are cool. It stands for the Ultimate Music Copycat Festival, and it's where tribute acts dress up exactly like someone else and play their music and then a bunch of people argue about how good someone played the riff from Sweet Child of Mine endlessly. Um, it's really good for him because there's a blog that goes along with the contest where he can get into arguments about such subtleties and tell people what they should have done. In fact, um, and this is absolutely true, I went and bought you know what you should have done dot com um, and he is, along with Mike Halloran, you guys are like my main inspiration for that website. There's, if you go, if you, if you have a fancy phone, you want to type in, you know what you should have done dot com, there is an old lady going like this saying, thanks for the idea, and then this website right here. So if you, if any of you are performing and you get off stage and someone tells you what you should have done, please feel free to use that. And I'm not just saying that so you'll come to my website and see my band, Rookie Card, which is playing at the North Park Arts Festival on uh, May 15th. But um, it's, it's too bad that Ed doesn't have any actual musical talent, and he gets a lot of grief from the, from the fellow judges like Alicia here, who are musically talented, as being the dumb guy who doesn't know anything about music. But he, doesn't, he can't do it. He so wishes he was in a tribute band, and he texts me and calls me, let's go see this tribute band. And I'm just like, no, it's the worst thing in the world. But he's finally found his niche. He's starting a spoken word uh, tribute to Bukowski called, um, it's called Charles in Charge. And um, they're playing here, opening up for a sublime cover band, I think, right? That's, that's kind of all I've got.